The curious case of Margareta Peter, a Swiss woman born on Christmas Day in 1794, unraveled into a harrowing tale of religious fervor, delusion, and a tragic culmination that shocked the community of Wildesbuch and beyond. Initially recognized as a prodigy in her childhood, displaying remarkable religious zeal, Margareta's fervent religious passion took a perilous turn as she matured, ultimately leading to a disturbing delusion that culminated in her ordering her own crucifixion at the hands of her devout followers at the age of 28. This is her strange and unsettling true story, Margareta Peter, the prophetess who forced her own followers to crucify her. The peculiar narrative of Margareta Peter is chronicled in Historic Oddities and Strange Events, a compilation of tales authored by Sabine Baring Gould in 1891. Baring Gould, an Anglican priest and prolific writer, is notably remembered for his hymns, with Onward Christian Soldiers being among his best-known compositions. The story of Margareta Peter within Baring Gould's anthology is titled A Swiss Passion Play, drawing a parallel to the dramatic reenactments of the Passion of Christ presented by Christian denominations during the Lenten season. According to Baring Gould, Margareta's journey begins in the small hamlet of Wildesbuck, located near the northern Swiss town of Schaffhausen. Born into a family led by her widowed father, John Peter, Margareta had several siblings, including a brother named Caspar and four sisters, Barbara, Susanna, Elizabeth, and Magdalena. From the outset, Margareta exhibited signs of a prodigious nature, gaining recognition for her exceptional learning aptitude at school and drawing attention for her deep devotion during church services. Her early years were marked by a forceful personality that influenced her family and allowed her to dominate her older siblings. By the age of six, Margareta was reportedly reading the Bible and delivering sermons to her family, acting as their head. Even the local pastor, during her confirmation preparation, was impressed by her fervent enthusiasm for the Christian faith. Dramatic changes in 1816, Margareta's life took a significant turn when her maternal uncle, a small farmer residing in Rudolfingen, invited her to work as his housekeeper. During her stay with her uncle, Margareta encountered the Pietists, a fundamentalist movement within Lutheranism. Attending their prayer meetings had a profound impact on Margareta, leading to a notable change in her personality that did not escape the notice of her siblings. When questioned about this transformation, Margareta attributed it to a divine revelation, stating that God was revealing himself to her more and more every day, so that she became daily more conscious of her own sinfulness. Upon her return home in 1817, Margareta began preaching the Word of God. The Peter family had hired three new servants during her absence, Heinrich Ernst, Ursula Kundig, and Margaret Jagley, all of whom became devoted disciples of Margareta, who declared herself a prophetess. Over the next three years, her compelling sermons drew a growing number of followers from the surrounding area to Wildesbuch, establishing it as a center of spiritual attention. Unsatisfied with local influence, Margareta decided in 1820 to take her message beyond Wildesbuch and embarked on a journey across Switzerland. As she wandered the country, her charismatic presence drew people from various regions, solidifying her reputation as an influential religious figure. In a strange incident in 1822, Margareta and her sister Elizabeth vanished, prompting months of searching by the police. But then, the two women reappeared on their own on January 8, 1823 with no explanation as to where they had been or why they had gone missing. However, Margareta's behavior became increasingly bizarre following her return. Secluding herself with her sister in her room, the two engaged in continuous Bible reading and prayer. Margareta also began speaking about the devil, warning her followers that his forces were loose in the world. Soon, she claimed to experience prophetic visions depicting demons seizing control of the entire world. According to her, she was the only one standing between the devil and the rest of humanity. The fight with the devil. In March 1823, Margareta gathered her followers at her father's house, declaring at the site for the final battle with the devil. She declared, Lo, I see Satan and his firstborn floating in the air. They are dispersing their emissaries to all corners of the earth to summon their armies together. Her suggestible sister, Elizabeth, claimed to witness the same vision and prophesied the imminent rise of the Antichrist, linking it to the final battle. They proclaimed that Napoleon's son, the Duke of Reichstadt, would declare himself as the Antichrist, signaling the commencement of the ultimate battle. Margaret Jagley, who suffered from epilepsy, had a seizure during the gathering. Margareta, interpreting it as a vision of Napoleon's spirit marching against her with an army, directed her followers to take up any weapons they could find and to fight this army. Following her directives, they collected an assortment of weapons, including axes and clubs, 
and fortified themselves in a farmhouse attic. For three hours, Margareta's followers obediently attacked the furniture, walls, and the floor of the room. As the chaotic scene unfolded, a crowd gathered outside, drawn by the commotion. Part of the house wall crumbled, revealing Margareta and her followers in the act of destruction. In response, Margareta denounced the onlookers as enemies of God. After this destructive episode, they retired downstairs to rest, only to be summoned by Margareta after an hour for a different form of penance, self-flagellation, which she claimed would help repel the demons. Her sister, Elizabeth, chose to be beaten by Margareta, and the relentless cycle of violence continued. Even Margareta's father wasn't spared, as his saintly daughter took it upon herself to pummel him too. When concerned neighbors finally alerted the authorities, the police arrived to find Margareta's followers incapacitated on the floor while she continued to assault them. Eventually, all of her followers were detained in separate rooms, with some of them being sent home to try and calm the chaos. However, undeterred, Margareta continued to rouse the religious fervor of the women she was with, preparing for what she perceived as the final battle with the Antichrist, Margareta's crucifixion. The subsequent day, Margareta insisted that more pain was necessary to fend off the approaching devil. Seizing an iron wedge, she began bludgeoning her brother, encouraging her followers to resume their self-inflicted beatings. Asserting that her dead mother's ghost commanded her to sacrifice herself, Margareta's sister Elizabeth volunteered to take her place. Margareta accepted the offer and took a hammer, hitting her sister in the head. The congregation joined in, quickly bludgeoning Elizabeth to death. When a follower expressed concern, Margareta assured her that her sister would rise from the dead in three days, announcing that she too must still die in order to save the world. Margareta ordered her followers to crucify her, promising that she would rise from the dead three days later alongside Elizabeth. Initially hesitant, they relented after her assurance of resurrection in three days. Crafting a makeshift cross, they followed Margareta's urging, nailing her to it through her hands, elbows, feet, and breasts. She then commanded them to stab her through the heart. Failing in their attempts, they resorted to using a hammer and crowbar, ultimately smashing her head. The congregation then gathered around the lifeless bodies, praying for their resurrection within three days. However, as you can already guess, the promised revival did not occur, and both Margareta and her sister remained deceased. Another day or two passed before Margareta's father went into the town to tell the pastor about Margareta and Elizabeth's deaths. On the 3rd of December, 1823, those responsible for the deaths of Margareta and Elizabeth were put on trial and faced murder charges, resulting in the conviction of 11 of her followers, with prison sentences ranging from 6 months to 16 years. Margareta's house was razed in order to prevent it from becoming a pilgrimage site, though some pietists were able to visit it before its destruction. Conclusion the tragic saga of Margareta Peter, marked by a journey from prodigious beginnings to religious delusion and ultimately ending in a gruesome demise, raises profound questions about the intersection of faith, fanaticism, and mental health. As we reflect on this historical episode, it serves as a stark reminder of the potential dangers when religious fervor veers into extremism unchecked by rationality or intervention. The case of Margareta Peter stands as a cautionary tale urging us to explore the delicate balance between religious conviction and the potential consequences of unchecked fanaticism. As always, thanks so much for watching. This was a slightly shorter video, but I thought it was an interesting case to take a look at. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and drop a comment down below, as it really helps the channel. You have been watching The Mystery Abyss.